know, I, I felt it was, um, I had a, a, an amazing mentor um, when I was a medical student. That's when I started doing um, more research. Research meaning you find a problem and you try to find an answer, or you meet somebody who's working on an answer to a problem, or you look back at patients' charts to try to see, well, if everyone who came in with um, as one of our recent guests, prostate cancer. Well, what was the risk factors? If we go through 10,000 charts, what was out there? And it's tedious, painful work. But at the end of a project, you come up with something and you can contribute to society. Even if you didn't find what you were looking for, you were testing drug A and it never worked. Okay, well, your research simply told everyone, stop going after drug A maybe for this problem and, and do something else. So for the viewers, research is important. Yeah, and you know, you know, if I could add just w one other thing to that, and I think that this is something also that's really important. One thing that you do learn by doing research, uh, especially if you are heading into the medical field, you know, across all the professions, whether it's nursing, PA, physician, you know, across the board, physical therapist, OT, PT, um, what you do learn it, by reading research and by getting involved in research is that sometimes you hear about a research paper that came out that you know, it sounds like that it's just taken as fact. And, and you learn to actually look into the research and understand what went on behind the scenes, what the variables were, how many people were actually involved in this study. And, and you start to recognize some maybe flaws, you know, uh, or some things that we take as fact that maybe isn't exactly fact. And, and it, it teaches you to just be a better scientist and, right. and to look for, look for the truth. Right, so not just reading the headline of a paper. We see that on the news all the time where they talk about some flashy headline, but when you delve into the actual research paper, the 20 pages behind the title, you realize a lot more and that sometimes the title is, is not everything it seems. Um, I call those headliners, you know, people that just read the headline and then quote, spit out the quote, but when you look really into the paper, you realize a lot more to it. And so research is important, extracurricular activities, volunteering in the community, good grades, good board scores, and then here you are, a third year medical student. Which school are you in now? So I am in New York Institute of Technology, College of Osteopathic Medicine. It is formerly known as the New York College of Osteopathic Medicine, or NICOM. As Where many. is it located? So it's located in Old Westbury in Long Island, New York. So it's not Brooklyn, but we'll still accept yeah. you. Okay. And so you're, you're in school now. Now, for the viewers today watching, um, especially those interested in medical school, the first two years are spent in a classroom. Yeah, so we call those the, the preclinical years. Uh, you know, actually at, at my school there are two curriculums. There's a lecture-based curriculum and then there's a problem-based curriculum, which, which we actually have a title to called the doctor-patient continuum. And that's actually the curriculum that I was involved in. And for two years, I had a group which changed every single semester with two doctors in the room. And we would essentially teach ourselves medicine. You know, of course, we had the guidance of many doctors to constantly ask questions to, but we didn't attend lecture. Instead, we were given a case, kind of, you know, if you were in a hospital and you had a patient, and we would discuss amongst ourselves, you know, what's going on with this patient. We would act out doctor, act out patient. We would have someone act as the medical scribe. And through the course of sometimes it was a few weeks, sometimes it was just, you know, a few days, depending on the... Uh, how rigorous the case was, but we would decide, you know, what do we need to learn in order to solve this case and figure out what's going on for the patient? So we would, you know, choose a few topics, go home, study from the textbook, and then come back and discuss two days later for so a few That hours. sounds, you know, that's a new way of learning. Yeah. We're also used to sitting in a lecture hall with 100 or 200 students, watching some slides and someone lecture at us. So this is a new concept that I've seen, the problem-based curriculums where you're handed a a problem and go figure it out and by researching all the different things that it could be you learn yeah medicine. yeah and you know it, what I've gotten from it is instead of someone telling you a piece of information and, and you know it might spark your interest at the moment and you might say wow that's that's a cool thing I'll probably remember that yeah, usually about probably two weeks later you'll probably think back like what was it that I was trying to remember uh, with the problem-based learning tract with this type of curriculum this type of learning what you're doing is teaching yourself to make connections. And so you're creating those wirings in the brain to draw associations, make connections. And also you're thinking about patients from an early stage and you know, that's the best thing that you can do to help your patients in the future, I think. And so as I recall back in medical school, 
the first two years were, were tough. You were, it was sort of like drinking from a fire hose. It's not like college where you take 16 credits. It was, it was almost the equivalent of taking 32 or more credits each semester. And like drinking from that fire hose, you get through those two years and the light at the end of the tunnel, everything you had ever dreamed of arrives, which is third year. So tell us why third year is the most spectacular part of medical school. Well, I think you missed just one point, you know, in between. I skipped over the boards. <laughs> you I skipped over the over. B word. Yeah. Uh, not, not the one that others might be thinking of, but, no, you the know, board word. the boards, board scores, boards, uh, that's the exam that we take uh, typically at the end of second year of medical school, uh, which eventually will be used as one of the factors for applying for residency later on. And so, you know, that, that period between second year and third year, you're getting ready to take your board exam. Again, you get that nervous, anxious, But you're, you're already feeling. in medical school. You know you're going to be a doctor. So tell us about third year and why it's so important, why it's so you know, exciting for young doctors, young student doctors. Yeah, so you make it past that point and you, and you enter third year. And now it's, it's the time that you're entering the hospital. You're, you know, you're walking around with doctors and residents and nurses and the entire squad. And, Everyone's got their white coats on and you're walking into patients' rooms and you feel kind of important, like you, you should know something. And, you know, it's very rewarding to see how much of the knowledge that you gained in your first and second year actually do its part and, and play a role while you're walking around and seeing patients in the hospital. It, it all comes back to you and you forget things, but when it comes back, you're like, wow, you know, I remember sitting in that class or talking to that person about it. And it's just rewarding to be on that side of things, talking to a person. It's where you finally get to see a patient and apply what you learned. Yeah. And that, that's, that's really rewarding, not only because you spent so much time, but you also spent a lot of money. Yes. So how much is medical school costing these days? So uh, medical school for me costs uh, $60,000 a year, roughly. And that's, that's just for tuition. Strictly tuition. Yeah. That doesn't include you know, textbooks if you need for studying. Obviously, there's online resources now as well. So there four years, things. four years. Yeah. Four years, 60,000, quarter million dollars. Yeah. Plus whatever people spend on college. It's a big investment. Yeah. Um, it's important for people out there watching to know that finances should not be an obstacle, right? Definitely not. There, sh there, there should be no one out there who says, I can't become a doctor because I don't have the money. No. There are programs. Yes, there are programs, there are scholarships, there are plenty of scholarships out there, maybe not offered by, speci by this, that specific medical school that you're attending, but you know, they're out there and you just have to know how to look for it. You know, like I had mentioned before with running blood drives, uh, blood centers are giving $500 scholarships to anyone who runs a blood drive and gets 50 donors. And you know, that's an incentive to not only give back and get involved like we were discussing earlier, but it also helps you towards your education. Helps fund your future, right? Exactly. And then there are the loans, which we all took uh, at least most of us in, in medical school, that if you got into medical school, for, for folks out there watching, don't be afraid of the finance issue because there are loans available. You'll have to pay them back. But anyone who I know who was qualified to get into medical school and received an acceptance letter, they went. And um, even if we had no money, we were able to go to medical school because there are government funding loans which are guaranteed by the government. And so if you have the credentials and you have an acceptance letter, almost always these loans are available, correct? Yes. They're burdensome. It's a lot of money. Yes. But you, you, will, you will be able to seek your dream if you wanted to become a physician and you got an acceptance letter. Uh, finances should not obstruct your decision. No, you know, it definitely should never, should never get involved in whatever goals you have in life. And, and definitely if this is your passion and you know, you're doing something that's going to be giving back to people in the long run. You have to, you have to sort of believe that, you know, you're, you're putting in the money now, but you're, you're going to get back and you're going to pay back those loans, but you're also going to get back something more. And that's going to be, you know, the health of your patients, the smile of them walking out of the office and, and nothing. There's nothing there's like no it. Price tag there is no that. price tag on someone saying, thank yeah. you, you made me better. So what are you going to do when you grow up now? We've been talking about how to get into medical school. We've been talking about what it takes during medical school. What are you going to do when you grow up? So that's, uh, that's the famous question, especially as a third year medical student. I truly believe pediatrics is my calling as far as, you know, uh, right now, that's where I'm at. That, we'll have to bring you thought. back in a couple of years to see what you chose. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they say that people change their minds all the time. I know uh, 
pediatrics wasn't necessarily what I wanted to go into when I first started. Uh, but you know, along the way, you find where you're most happiest and where your niche is, honestly. Well, it and sounds like your most happiest is here in Brooklyn because I know that you're back at Brookdale spending your entire <laughs> third year, one of our county's greatest and oldest hospitals. Uh, I know you're seeing a lot there. So let's talk a little bit about you otherwise outside of medicine because I know as doctors and student doctors, all we focus on is medicine, medicine, and everyone thinks we have no lives outside <laughs> of here. So I'm going to ask you a, a bunch of Kings County questions. Oh, gosh. Born here or transplanted? Born here. Born here. So you've been here your whole life. I've been here my whole what life. What area of Brooklyn are you from? I'm from Flatbush area of Brooklyn. Uh, otherwise, different parts uh, close by Gravesend area as well. Very good. So favorite restaurant in Brooklyn? Is there one? Or are you a home cooking guy? I'm more of a home cooking guy. You know, my family uh, likes to smoke some meat and uh, my mom's a great cook. So the, barbe the, the barbecue them. in the backyard? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Knicks or Nets? It's a great question. I'm not so much of a basketball fan, but I was a Knicks fan growing up. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll let you go Yankees, with that one. Though. You're a Yankee Definitely fan. Definitely New okay. York Yankees. I'm a Mets fan. We'll, we'll let you go. Let's so cut here. We wish you luck. We wish you luck. It's good to have a Brooklyn-born medical student here now back in Brooklyn as a medical student, planning on practicing here in Brooklyn as, who knows, maybe a pediatrician. So I want to thank you for watching today. An interesting show shedding light on what it, be, what it takes to become a doctor, a physician, a medical student here with us today, Max Cohen at the New York Institute of Technology, spending some time at local Brookdale Hospital learning how to become a physician. I invite you to visit our website, medcastplus.com, and check out our tools and connect with us on social media. You can call us at 718-510-2103. Stay healthy, Brooklyn. Goodbye. <laughs>